I, I, I yield back. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Is there any further Mr. discussion Chairman. on yeah. the amendment? Yeah. The gentleman from Texas sure. recognized. Just, just one thing adding to, to my friend from Pennsylvania, um, the spirit of what the gentleman was talking about. Um, everything that is changed substantively fits on a third of a piece of paper, half a piece of paper, like four lines. Um, that's the truth. There's 24, hold on a second. There's 24 pages of a debt commission, okay? Uh, a debt commission which my colleagues on the side, uh, other side of the aisle uh, belied a moment ago um, in saying, uh, you know, that it was somehow, uh, you know, designed to target Medicare, Social Security, and so forth. Well, my question for my colleagues is, if we, if we can't have a serious co uh, conversation about reducing non-mandatory spending, which is what my colleagues here are rejecting. And you can reject the percentage. You can reject the nature and so forth. By the way, we're talking about 30 days. And my colleagues on the other side of the aisle utterly refuse to address the size and scope of the federal government at all. Zero. This is, no. Oh, Utterly refusal. And then and this and the sit here and say, oh, well, we can't have a debt commission because Medicare and Social Security might be brought up. That's, that's of course they'll be brought up. That's what of course mean. they should be addressed. Of course we need to deal with Medicare and Social Security. And the question with my colleagues is, what would be the proposal? We can have a debate about ages. We can have a debate about what to do about how to keep them solvent. The only answer from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is revenue. The only answer I've ever heard in my time in Congress, the only answer to address $33 trillion of debt and a $2 trillion deficit is revenue. The only answer. Meanwhile, the CBO, quote, this is the Congressional Budget Office, revenues received by the federal government in 2022 totaled $4.9 trillion, of which more than half was receipts from individual income taxes, which were the highest ever as a percentage of gross domestic product. If you look at the overall revenue of the United States, we, can, we, we might be able to tweak the levers and get a little more revenue or reduce a little bit more revenue, all in the context, by the way, of figuring out economic growth. And we could have that debate, happy to have that debate about what taxes should be. But the goal here is we've got to figure out how to address the fact that we have for my entire lifetime, for the most part, had nothing to offer to change the spending trajectory in this town. You can disagree with focusing on discretionary versus mandatory, but to criticize that in a bill offered last night five or so lines of changes, meaningful changes in impact in terms of the percentage, but, but to say, oh, that's somehow violative of process when you're saying, well, what are you going to do when you have any kind of a change with respect to a funding bill like we're talking about? We're debating the percentages, debating what the numbers should look like. But the legislation, as my friend from Pennsylvania pointed out, has been out for two weeks. There's, there was a change last night to the numbers. The gentleman pointed out that there was a Department of Homeland Security adjustment. I'd be happy to cut the Department of Homeland Security some. I'd be happy to cut the Pentagon some. That would be my choice. That would be my preference. But we've got to work through the body in the deliberative process to figure out which ones we're going to cut. If the general will yield? I'll yield on that. Yeah, well, for, first of all, my, my amendment doesn't say that it doesn't ban the commission. It just says you can't, you can't cut Social Security or Medicare. And there are other ways to be able to address the long-term viability of that program. Secondly, I'm, if the general wants to cut the Pentagon a budget, the, the uh, weapon systems that are that with all these cost overruns, I'm happy to join with him. But th this bill doesn't do that. You specifically protect it. Protect that, and the idea that we're and that we're saying that there's only minor changes. The idea that you're going from an eight percent cut to a thirty percent cut is huge, and the idea that nobody could tell me what the impact on WIC was going to be, and we're about to vote on this. I mean, that nobody could tell me how many people will lose their meals on wheels as a result of this. I mean, that's a that, that is that's substantial. That's why there should be discussion. That's why there should be more hearings on what are the impact of these cuts, and it's like no big deal. There are real people behind these cuts. 
But in any event, I appreciate the gentleman's comments. You guys have kind of made clear where you're coming from. I, you don't agree with this amendment, fine, vote it down, and you know we'll go to the floor and I would note. I would note that my colleagues didn't agree with the 8% cut either. Uh, my colleagues, I'm, I don't think my colleagues would agree to a 2% cut, a 4% cut, a 12% cut, a 40% cut. Uh, the fact is, there's zero cut that we could put in here that would be uh, an across-the-board cut to manage what we're dealing with. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, the, the, but those, but the cuts with respect to the. Just remind people. Just remind uh, people, please don't talk over one another. It's very difficult for the stenographer. Gentleman uh, from Texas Control. In, in terms of continuing to perpetuate government that we're talking about right now, we could put forward any spent that 8% cut reflected the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The question was whether or not it was going to, uh, whether or not it was going to leave defense in place, which matched the Fiscal Responsibility Act levels of a $28 billion increase, left intact the spending levels for veterans, which was a part of the discussion and agreement, and then had an 8% across the board cut to match the Fiscal Responsibility Act levels. That was the actual design of that bill two weeks ago that my colleagues opposed. It was literally designed to, within some degree of rounding errors and, and fractional percentages, match the Fiscal Responsibility Act. That's my point. My colleagues disagree with that. Why? Because, and understandably, with respect to the point about, okay, it's an across the board cut, not surgical cuts, but that's the point. When we're talking about something in, turn, in terms of continuing to perpetuate government and perpetuating government funding, which is the debate here, is whether or not you're going to actually reduce spending in the process of doing so. This legislation is designed to do that. Mm -hmm. This is These are bigger cuts, and that's what we're trying to move forward with. Okay. I yield back. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, our gentlelady from New Mexico is recognized. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman.